Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Shit Moms Won't Say. My guest tonight is one of the top and funniest content creators out there right now. Uh, she's also a proud member of the Cycle Breakers Club. Uh, I think I mean, I'll trademark that. I like that. Trademark pending. We'll see. Anyway, I'm super excited to have her here. Mom of two, Libby from Diary of an Honest Mom. Hello. Hey, thank Hello. you so much for having me. I'm of super course. excited to talk about all the things. Of course. And what I, you know what I love about this? Because like nobody's surprised that this isn't live. Like you and I have been chatting for like the last five minutes. So after the intro and I'm like, hi. And everybody's like, yeah, it's the first time we've ever spoken. Like a hundred percent not. But I appreciate the like feigned enthusiasm of like we haven't yeah. spoken a word to each other yet. So <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, Thank you. So let's jump into the Big Mom 3, and then we'll get into some some other stuff. Okay? Okay. Cool. So first question of the Big Mom 3, real easy. Did you always know you wanted to be a mom? Uh, no, I didn't. I actually, for a long, I was part of that club that was like, I'm never having kids. I will ruin them. I am not meant to be a mother. I am not motherly. I don't have mother nurturing qualities. I am sarcastic and I want to live my life and do things for myself. And I was like, nope, not going to have kids. And then one day that changed. So um, yeah, but I did not always know. <laughs> Love that. I'm very sad that you don't live here because I feel like we'd be friends. <laughs> Where do you live? Where I'm do you live? New York. I'm okay. in New York. You're in Canada, aren't you? You're not yeah. New York. Yeah. You're like in a real nice part. Like Canadians are nice. We're 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 pretty nice. Yeah, yeah, we're pretty nice. Yeah. I have not met a Canadian with a resting bitch face though and you do say that you have one. So that's I do. Yeah. I tough. used to wait I used to waitress and all the time like and so when you're waitressing you have to think of a lot of things at the same time and remember everything. And when I concentrate, I look pissed off. Like I look like mad at the world <laughs> and like inside, like I loved serving. It was like one of my favorite jobs. I'd be so happy and people would be like, what's wrong? And I'm like, nothing. Like I'm just thinking, I just have things in my brain. I'm not mad. And then it would make me mad that people thought I was mad. <laughs> I get it. Like, <laughs> yeah. I get it. And also yeah. serving is great. I'm with you. I think everybody should be required <laughs> to be a server at some point in their life because it teaches you how to be a human. Um, oh, right. Oh, I could talk about that one. Especially if you weren't like raised by humans. Um, yeah. It really helps you become a human and learn how to talk to people. So yeah. Right. But also like, people. also if you are raised very privileged, I have friends who are raised very privileged. They have never had to work in customer service and the way they treat people in customer service makes me want to crawl into a hole Horrendous. because I'm like, you, if you have ever been on the receiving end of that, you would know how awful it is and how little control these people have over like the rules and regulations and anything that's even happening. Like they're just the face you see. So yeah, it's, I think that everyone should have to work in customer service, Agreed. no matter where you come from. Agree, agree. And also, like, if you serve, you know that, like, you should be giving at least 20%, no matter what. Because if a server is being, like, I don't know, if they're not having a good day, it's not, it doesn't matter. That's how they make their money. So I'll step off that soapbox. But yes, everyone should be a server or, we're, like, work in customer service at some point. Okay, second question of Big Mom 3. What is the shittiest or most backhanded piece of advice or like comment you've ever gotten from another mother or parent? I feel like it's not one specific thing, but I know that when I was a mom of really little kids, my kids are five and seven now, but when my kids were like babies and toddlers and I was in the trenches and I had, you know, like hard, deep postpartum depression and I was just struggling to keep my head above water. I remember sharing that with an older mom and she said to me, oh, well, you just wait, bigger kids, bigger problems. And I was like, I literally have not slept in six months. Like, I don't know my hand from my foot. I cannot even think to tomorrow, the sound of my children's cries make me want to scream. Um, so maybe the problems will be bigger. You know, maybe I will be dealing with bullying or drug addiction or whatever it is. 
but you know what, right now I'm dealing with this and right now I'm exhausted. And right now I just literally need to get to the next hour. So maybe don't try and tell me that it's worse when they're older, maybe just support me. So that is one of my, like my biggest pet peeves that people say to parents of young children. I I can't stand it. I can't stand it. It's so obnoxious. So my daughter is, she's going to be two. um, And my wife is pregnant with girl number two coming in March. Okay. I was interviewing someone yesterday and we were talking similarly. Like, so like the mommy internet world has changed a lot over the last like couple of years. It's become much more supportive. Like I know you're going to talk about, like you talk about your village a lot. Like it's just become a much kinder space. It's become a big, like what works for you kind of space. And we were talking about when we were in this interview yesterday and she'll be on soon. I can't talk about it, but she'll be on soon. She's very cool. Um, this like, older mommy internet culture like when mommy internet culture first started and it was all about like shitting all over your kids shitting all over like moms of younger kids and that same exact sentiment of like well you'll see just wait like no yeah. i don't wh- why this is what's going on right now yeah what like what's with the comparison olympics you know what like if i have babies and toddlers and i feel like i'm drowning you can also say I have a 12 year old and they don't want to talk like you can share your issues and I will empathize with you. And I will say, Oh, that's gotta be hard. Like we're allowed to have the capacity to say that two completely different situations are stressful for different reasons. It doesn't have to be that one is worse than the other. Right. Like, but let's all learn how to empathize with one another and support one another without having to compare what's worse because I'm living my life. I'm not living your life. I'm dealing with my own. I'm dealing with my child who's waking up six times in the night. It doesn't matter to me that he might be addicted to drugs in 15 years. Well, I don't, I don't care. It's a right bigger now, problem. I just want to sleep and you for more than three hours. Like, you should bow down to all the older moms that know everything. It's a one upping, you know, it's one upping nonsense. It's so stupid, but don't yeah. stop doing that. It's so rude, everybody. Knock it off. Nobody likes it. Um, all right. <laughs> Third question of the big mom three. What is a skill or superpower you had before becoming a mom that you think has really helped you as a mom? Okay, so prior to being a content creator, I worked in special education. And yeah, and my dad is actually deaf and illiterate and partially blind. So he like deals with a lot of disabilities. And so I've always had a lot of experience with people who have disabilities and also with children. I worked at camp. That's where I met my husband. Like I've always worked with children and people with disabilities. So I've always like had these techniques around like dealing with behavior and what like shapes our children and how to help children who have like sensory needs or who are not neurotypical and all those types of things. Like I, I just had a solid basis of like almost like how to treat children, I guess, and how to like not raise them, but like if you're having issues with behavior, like what works and what doesn't work, right? So I feel like I definitely had that in my back pocket that like someone who's never like worked with children maybe might not have had. And that has helped me because my my son has apraxia of speech, which is a really rare um, like neurological speech condition. He didn't speak till he was three and a half. Oh, wow. Like, yeah. And so he ended up like, He made up like his own sign language because he just wanted to communicate. Like he knew exactly what he wanted to say, but he couldn't get it out. And then we eventually taught him like like ASD and he used pictures a lot and he has a lot of sensory issues. And so I feel like, especially with him, like he's definitely my more high needs kid. It has helped me so much to have had experience with like children who are more like not neurotypical. Uh, So I'm really thankful for that, I guess. Yeah. That's great. That takes like a very special kind of person. Like anybody who works in like a special needs type of field, like my wife worked with special needs for years and years and years before becoming a doula. And like, I couldn't do it. Like, I, I just think it's amazing. So that's really cool. I didn't know that about you. That's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you. Let's uh, let's jump into some other stuff. Some stuff, if we will. So, um, you know, you mentioned your dad. (laughs) <laughs> so we're gonna put him to yeah. the side for now. Uh, you recently sort of opened up a little bit about your own experience, like with family and going no contact. Um, a big part of my channel is talking about that and just kind of talking through how normal it is, uh, how often it happens, and how hard it is. 
you know, so I'd love to just like kind of chat with you about it and see like where you are and and how it's going and and check in. A lot of people who watch the show um, are part of like the narcissistic abuse community and have a really solid understanding and like support around it. Right, right. Yeah, no, I would love to to talk about it to a certain degree. <laughs> of course, no, I'm like, listen, yeah, yeah, yeah when no, you're but, comfortable, it's a it's like, uncomfortable topic. For sure, no, and I talk about it, like, on my social media channels. I don't go into super specifics, but, I mean, anyone who's ever deal, dealt with narcissistic abuse or a parent with bipolar disorder or borderline personality disorder, um, you know, they pretty much get the gist of the sort of things you have to deal with. Um, when you have a parent like that uh, without going into uh, too much detail and you're right it is not normal it is common that's a better word for it common yeah sure yeah I've started to like think about the words I use about like around that topic so I'm like to me it seems normal because so many people I know have dealt with it but I'm like it doesn't mean it's normal it means it's common right but it's fairly common and you know what social media has really connected me to um communities that talk about like parents with narcissism and different things like that and it's so funny before I was really like on TikTok and Instagram and in these spaces on those platforms I really felt alone like I thought that I was one of the only ones especially in the circles that I'm in now I don't know anyone who comes from not only a broken home with a single parent but like with undiagnosed mental health and you know narcissism and like this just like awful relationship with like your own parents you know most of my friends are like best friends with their moms and hang out with them and do all these things and I'm just like hey hey cool go have fun (laughs) that's fine enjoy the holidays they sound amazing have fun together (laughs) oh you don't leave every house crying that's so weird yeah so nice okay that that must be so nice for you that you can ask your mom for advice and that you don't have to parent her that's really nice um (laughs) so yeah it um it's definitely a challenge and I am so grateful for social media for connecting me to other people who deal with it um I'm with you on that I mean you know like so for me I know like I parent very much in spite, very much in spite. Like, would you say that you parent in spite? Do you know what? I always, I decided a long time ago that I wasn't going to do the opposite of what my mom did. Cause I feel like a lot of people do that. And then I see, I, I see this like opposite, but like the total, the total opposite. And I feel like the extreme of anything is like maybe not healthy. So I really try to like, in a way it's like, yes, it is in spite of it. I have used my terrible experiences growing up to be like, I will not do that. Yeah. I'm going to go this direction, but I have to really consciously be like, Hey, we're not going to go completely the other way. We're going to, we're going to try and be balanced. Cause like as moms, that's what we want more than anything is to like raise balanced children who aren't abused, but also aren't entitled. Right. And yeah. it's that like, you know, they're, they're not neglected, but they're not handed everything on a silver platter. And I feel like when you grow up in trauma and like for me growing up in poverty and growing up with a lot of abuse, I, of course, like we want to give our children everything, right. And we, we want them to be safe and happy and have the things we didn't have, but they didn't live our lives growing up. Right. So all they know is what you've given them. So I try and it's hard, but I try really, I try really hard to like, give them what I didn't have, but not like in excess. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah, it does. A hundred percent. And like, it sounds like we grew up sort of opposite. So I don't come from a broken home. I grew up in uh, wealth uh, Mm -hmm. and I grew up with two narcissistic parents. And like, I have to be very, very mindful of like, just because I was given everything as a means of like shutting me up um I I do that you know so I I hear you and like I I think it's another like terminology shift right like typical versus common like maybe it's not in spite maybe it's just being mindful of that balance because there is in between there has to be yeah or you know none of us would like survive so right and then there's like the idea of like materially and relationally right like relationally I would say I'm just about opposite Yes, to, me too. You know, yeah. To, you know, like how my mom was, it was very self centered and very everything that was happening was happening to her and not happening to us and was yes. not a responsibility. And, you know, and so I try to have 
like one of my main goals as a parent is to have like emotional wellness in our house, like for everyone to be emotionally well and to be heard and to be understood and nothing to be revolving around anyone in particular. Yeah, I get I that. Know. I get that. It's, you know, it's tough. Like, I, I wonder if you have it. Like, I still have people in my life that have relationships with them. I am actually funny enough that we're talking right now. Monday was my one year, no contact. Um, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Like, so, I mean, I know like yours is a little bit newer, but like mine's not super old. And like, I just pff, done, um, you know, I have people in my life that still do talk to them who I sometimes wonder, like, do they believe me? You know, like, because the outside, mm-hmm. they don't see it, you know, they they're not a really, really good show. So, I mean, do you still have people that are around you that are sort of like, mm, this would be crazy or they, you know, what is it? I mean, they're not saying it to me. <laughs> no, they're sure they're it. Say it to my face. <laughs> you know, they're not, they're not saying it to me. And it's so weird because like I live in a small town where everybody knows everybody and everything. And unfortunately, like my mom lives in the same town as me. Oh, yikes. Um, yeah. So it's a really tricky, it's a really tricky situation. And I do sometimes wonder like what is being said, but at the end of the day, like I know who I am and I know what's important. And I know that my, you know, my family comes first and I have to do what is right for my mental health and for the well being of my family. And if other people don't get it, it's not really my responsibility to make them get it. And you know, what? and Absolutely. the thing is with narcissists is they dig themselves enough holes that eventually the people that they're telling lies to will figure it out because part of being narcissistic is that you don't know how to maintain relationships and you will say whatever you need to say to keep people on your side. And eventually if people are smart enough, they'll see that it goes in circles and then they'll figure it out. So yeah. it's kind of like, just let them figure it out You're on right. their own. Yeah. That's like, yeah. a, that's a hard thing people don't realize is like not being able to tell your side of the story, you know? Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. I don't need to, you know, for me, yeah. I don't need to. And there's a couple of flying monkeys around me at all times that I know about and I see you and I know you watch this. So super fun. Um, my last question around that, and then we'll come, we'll go to happier things. Um, how'd you luck out on the in-law front? Um, well, I mean, it wasn't always sunshine and rainbows. <laughs> Um, but I did luck out my, um, so my husband is from England. We met at camp when I was 16, he was 17. We didn't start dating until I was 19. So like a few years later. And then I actually like things were quite terrible at home. And, uh, he was in Canada for like a six month visit and his visa was running up and he was like, well, I'm going back to England. I don't know when I'm coming back. And I was living with my mom at the time and it was a very not good situation. And he was like, you should come to England. And I was like, what? Like I didn't even, I'd never been anywhere. I'd never been on an airplane. I didn't know who our prime minister was. Like, I was like, I knew nothing. Like I literally knew nothing. I was like, okay. So (laughs) I moved to England and I lived with his family, with his parents and him. Um, And he like slept in the office and gave me his room. It was the cutest thing. Uh, So I actually lived with them. And I would say that my relationship with his mom was not awesome at first. Um, We got married really young and like, I ended up taking him to Canada, like halfway across the world and their family was going through a lot of stuff. So it wasn't awesome at first, but they, you know, he grew up in a stable home. They're relatively stable people. No one's perfect, but they are quite lovely. And now my father-in-law lives in Canada and he's like the world's best father-in-law he's like my best friend when he got um so my husband's parents ended up getting divorced and so his dad moved here to Canada and uh lived with us for like a year and he became like my best friend like he lived with us when I was on mat leave and we hung out all the time and super lovely and then he got remarried so yeah I don't know I don't that didn't answer your question no it totally did ask but yeah it's so interesting because like his dad is just like encouraging and kind and like emulates all the characteristics that I would ever want my children to have I remember actually I want to tell this story I remember in the early days when I was dating my husband and you know how you just like ask you know your partner like all the questions about all the things like you're just trying to get to know them And we were out for dinner and I said, if you could go on a trip around the world with anybody, who would it be? And of course, in the back of my mind, I wanted to say me, Um, (laughs) but he doesn't. And he says his dad. And I was like, what? Because I like, I hadn't seen my dad for 10 years and my mom 
was insane. And I was like, I didn't think that people liked their parents, right? Especially because we were 19. And even people who have okay relationships with their parents at 19 don't like them because they're like, they're your parents, right? And I was like, you would go with your dad? And I didn't understand it. And then I met him. I'm like, oh, yeah, I get it. So it is pretty nice. It's really nice to be able to like model some of their family traditions as well. Like, cause there's so many things like we didn't eat around the table growing up. There's so many things we, like we didn't have any normal family things. So even just seeing his parents doing things, maybe be like, oh, like that's how you're supposed to do it. Cause I didn't know anything. So it's, it's pretty sweet. It, it does suck that my mother-in-law's in England though. Cause my parents don't, or my kids don't really have a grandma yeah around right so that's hard but she is she's lovely she's a great grandma that's awesome well and I, I asked because I, I've so many people that I've spoken to like they realize the I guess like the extremity of the situation the, the, what they see the dysfunction right the, right the dysfunction like when I met my wife's family okay. who I mean I love them like they live six minutes away from us we see them almost every day I could hang out with them all the time until I met them though. I had no idea. And then I met them and I was like, Oh my, Oh no, that's what it's supposed to be like. And then I was right. like, all right, well now I got to figure this right. out, you know, because you know, you know that you don't like living in the toxic environment that you're in and you know that you don't enjoy the relationships with your parents. But if you have never seen what it looks like to have a healthy bond or, you know, mentally well parents or whatever, it is mind blowing. I remember many moments where I was like, oh, like they disagree on something and no one's yelling. Like that was one thing. Yes. And like when I lived with my husband's family, I'm like, I lived with them for a year and I didn't hear one human being in that house yell for a year. And I was like, people exist like this? Like I didn't know that people existed without yelling. I didn't know. They don't that. walk on eggshells. They like tell the truth about what they have going on. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. It's like, it's so weird. My it's wife so and I are crazy. together 10 and a half years. This past year was the first time in 10 years that I heard them fight a little bit. Yeah. And they made up instantly. Both sides were like, you know what? I did this. I did this. Done. Right. Conflict resolution. <laughs> I was like, oh, what the fuck that was that? That's- that's nice that we have conflict resolution in this family. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing all that. I know it's like not the most fun stuff, but you know, people need to hear it. Cause like you said, it's very common. It's very misunderstood. When you tell somebody like, I don't speak to my family. They're like, well, what did you do? You know? Yeah. And it's, it's like always nice for other people to hear. It's just, it's and, and, that I, happens. and I think as moms, we like, I know when I, like, I didn't like a lot of the things that happened to me growing up, but it wasn't until I became a mom that I was like, how could you? Because mm-hmm. the love that I feel for my children, like, takes my breath away. And, like, you literally would do anything to protect them from harm. Mm-hmm. So to even consider being the main source of harm and throwing your children under the bus or intentionally hurting your children or manipulating your children, like, it just is mind-blowing to me. And I feel like having children brought up all those feelings of like, how could you do that to the person that you brought into this world? And how can you continue to do those things? It really is like, it's super mind blowing, actually. I'm I'm with you. And I think a lot of people realize that they become parents and they're like, this is, yeah, this is wrong. Yeah. But but people who haven't experienced it, that's where I was going. I lost my train of thought. People who haven't experienced it, they just think, oh, well, no, your mom cares for you. Like, your mom loved you, your mom raised you, your mom fed you, your mom read you bedtime stories and listened to your hard days and encouraged you because that's what they think of as mom because that's what they had and that's what they do. And so they can't even wrap their mind around a mother who wouldn't do those things. Like they don't even understand, just like we didn't understand what a functional home looked like. And we were like, oh my gosh, this is what it looks like. They can't wrap their heads around like, how a mother could be so or a father or you know a parent Anyone. could be so yeah. hurtful yeah or like if they did yeah. do these typical things there was a motive right like that's what I feel like right. about in our mind is like yes I did a lot of typical things in addition to all the other crazy shit with motive right right you know right incredible yeah. incredible 
All right, listen, let's talk about your platform. That's where I want to go now because it's insane and you've just been blowing up and you're funny as hell. And I love watching everything you do. Every every time you post a video, my wife introduced me to you. She was like, you need to check this chick out. She's so funny. And I was like, okay. She's always sending me people. She's like, have the person on the show. They're so funny. And like, sometimes I'm like, all right, like they're funny and oh, fine. And then I saw your stuff and I was like, I'm going to reach out immediately. I love your content. I think you're just, you know, you're an honest mom, right? Like it's true. What is like the video that you've made? Cause you're really like a video content creator. That's where you're just like, yeah, crushing it. What's the one that you made that you're like, this is my shit. This is it. I got this. Oh, it's so hard to pick because I love making content. Because they're all so good. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Because it just like it fills my creativity bucket and I just laugh my head off at myself and like I entertain myself and <laughs> like I just watch the back. My husband's like, What are you watching? And he's like, You watching yourself again? I'm like, Yes, it's yes, I'm funny. Um they're fun to make, but honestly, honestly, the pun in that, I I love making content that hits home too, because I feel like a lot of people don't talk about hard things. And a lot of people feel uncomfortable being vulnerable and feel uncomfortable talking about hard things and don't necessarily have the capacity to explain in words why something is hard or how something is difficult or just feelings, right? I'm, I'm always very fascinated by like emotional health and our feelings and our mental health and like what brings us to where we are. So I would say my, my favorite video is I made a monologue video about depression and motherhood that went pretty viral. Um, and it just talked about like the monotony of every day and how it feels like you don't get anything done and how you can feel like you're going a little bit crazy. Um, and that one I think resonated with a lot of people. Um, that's probably one of my favorite, my favorite videos. Um, or one of my first spiral videos was, (laughs) um, just like things, things I do that I can't stop doing. And it was just all those like adulting, like buying lettuce just to throw it in the garbage (laughs) next week. And like being like, I'm in a planted garden and then not, and then planting it and then leaving it to die. Um, just all those like dumb things that like you try to be an adult and it never really works. So I, it's so, so funny because people are always like, you need to pick a niche, you know, to everyone. Like pick one what thing to niche? talk about. And I'm like, I'm going to talk about everything. I'm going to talk about mom guilt. I'm going to talk about having ADHD. I'm going to talk about narcissism. I'm going to talk about mother. I'm going to talk about it all because none of us are one thing right like we are funny and we're compassionate and we're empathetic and we're sarcastic and like we can be all of those things so I know I didn't answer your question but you uh, did answer my you totally did what story is I love all my answers my question all right you totally (laughs) answered my question you pat yourself on the back and be like I'm super funny every fucking video I make is great and I was like that's what I wanted to hear from you so what do you like what do you do with it now because you're like what, like a hundred, over a hundred K on Instagram. You're like over 200 K on TikTok. Like, what do you do with that? Are you just like, look at all these people who know me. Or are you just like, it's insane. It's very yeah. insane taking my children to school in the morning. So I was like, what have they seen? What do they know about me? <laughs> I live in a small town. Like clearly everyone has seen it by now. Um, but you know what? I have always been passionate about helping women. Like before I was on social media, you know, I ran organizations, um, you know, that benefited women living in shelters at Christmas, like giving them gifts. And I, I ran different like women's groups and things like that. And I've always had a heart for helping women and encouraging women. And I've always been a writer. So I wrote poems and and songs in high school. And I wrote a blog when I first had my daughter, I went to university for journalism right out of high school. I've always loved writing and being creative. And so yeah, we're like, very similar by the way <laughs> degree in creative writing all kinds of shit for women I like this I like you I like you more than right. I even knew I liked and, you this is great <laughs> this is very so nice. this has been like a, it's been like a culmination of like my passions and my talents together like if someone had have been like create your dream job like 10 years ago I would have said like I would love to just, you know, speak to women and encourage women, but how do you make a job out of that? Like, who are these people that go and speak on stages? Where do they even come from? Like that, that's not a real job that people can get. Um, And so now that I have this platform, it's helped me see a path to where I want to go. And like, I would love to write a book. That's what I would love to do. 
Um, I'm starting a blog that should be launched in less than a month. So I'll be talking a lot about, um, you know, like dealing with narcissistic parents and boundaries and just motherhood stuff in general, all the things that I already talk about on my platform, just like more in depth. Um, so that is what I'm doing with it. My first step is the blog. The long, long long-term goal is to hopefully write a book one day and really just like tie in my story with like life lessons and motherhood and womanhood and all those types of things. So it's really cool because I never like two years ago, I never could have even imagined that I'd be where I'm at today. Like TikTok, I have 280,000 followers. Um, and I mean, like, it's pretty cool, but you can have a few viral videos and shoot up to a hundred K sure. like that can happen for people. So like, it's cool, but it's like, oh, you know, like who knows how long lasting that is. But Instagram has really been interesting yeah. because it's known for slow growth. And every person I've talked to has said like, I don't know how that has happened. Cause I, in January I had 2000 followers and I now have 115,000 followers. So in what? eight months yeah it's not- I had 50,000 I had 50,000 in July and 100,000 in August so I got 50,000 followers in one month so it's been really insane and just even been exciting but difficult to acclimate to I feel like people look at me and they're like oh you know what you're doing like you know what you're doing you have 100,000 followers or like you must have had this like amazing content strategy and I'm like nope I was just myself and I just talked about things that nobody that nobody else is talking about like so people wanted to listen because no one else was talking about it like yeah um so it's really cool and I like I obviously have big dreams and like I'd love to reach more women and expand but uh, for right now I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing and focus on the blog well it's working and it's awesome to watch it's really cool and it's always nice to see that kind of growth and like yeah Instagram is like slow growth and like you look at the rates and like you know, me and my, my little crew over here, we're always congratulating ourselves because the rate's been great. It's not that that's nuts because Instagram right. is like the slow and steady. And like, you have a community right. that's really watching too. You know, it's not like a hundred plus thousand followers that aren't paying attention. Like it's people that are really yeah. interested and you got it. Cause you're just being yourself, which I think is really cool. Right. Right. Thanks. And it's, it's been really weird being called an influencer. Cause I've never I mean, a year ago, I'd never even heard the word influencer. I didn't follow them. It wasn't anything I did. I'm like, what is an influencer? <laughs> um, and I never really associated with that term. Um, like, I'm okay if people call me that now, but I like to think of myself as more of a, like a content creator. Like, I'm not selling a lifestyle. I'm not there just promoting a lifestyle. You know, I'm if I'm going to influence anything, I want to influence moms to accept themselves and to, like, own their imperfections and to give themselves grace and to give themselves a break and all that kind of stuff like that's what I want to do so you know the the brand the brand partnerships pay the way so that I can put the time into the content that I really want to make right the the brand partnerships aren't the goal they are like almost like the means to getting to the goal and allowing me to have that time so that I don't have to go to a nine to five that I can stay home and make content you know, that is really going to reach women and help women. So yeah, we'll see where it takes me. I would have never guessed that I'd be where I am today a year ago and who knows what will happen in a year. Keep going. It's so cool. Congrats. Thanks. All right. Thank you. uh, Of course. Yeah. So I'll keep following you. I love it. Let's, uh, let's start to wrap it up. I have two final questions. Uh, and then, then you're free to go. All right. First, first of the final two with your kids at their current ages. So they're five and seven. Right. Yeah. What is something you cannot live without as a mom? Um, my village. Yes. And I don't have a big village and I don't have, you know, tons of people dropping by and taking my kids for me. But the few people in my life who get motherhood, who I can text in the middle of the night or I can call at the last minute and say, can I drop my kids off? I need to go to an appointment or just the people online even who understand what it's like to parent while not having your own parents, right? Having people in my life who get me and get my situation and who can empathize with me, that is what I can't live without. Like I couldn't live without it as like a mom of littles. I can't live without it now. And I'm certain in the future, it'll be the same. Like I can't imagine having to do this on my own. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Last question. Uh, What is something that you know now that you wish you knew before becoming a mom? Um, nobody knows what they're doing. At all. <laughs> That's true. Yes. Yes. I think you thought that, that there was true. like these super moms who like 
knew like how to like cook and clean and manage the bills and parent their children and do all the things. No one, no one knows. No. Literally zero people know. And the people who do look like they have it together are either failing in areas that you have no idea about, or they're just not sharing about certain things. Like literally nobody has it all together. Um, and I wish that I knew that because growing up the way I grew up, I thought that I had to like become this like certain type of parent or person. And there isn't any one parent who, who gets it all right. So now I just aspire to be the best version of myself. And that's, that's good enough. And I wish I knew that a lot earlier. That's awesome. All right. Thank you so much for being here. Where can people follow you if they don't already follow you, but where can they follow you? Oh, they can follow me at diary of an honest mom on either TikTok or Instagram. And my website is um, www.diaryofanhonestmom.com. So um, that will be launched in uh, mid-October. Hell yes. Super cool. Yeah. Libby, thank you so much for being here. Thank you guys for tuning in every week. We'll see you soon.